Hey, welcome to my channel. So we finally officially have PS2 games being emulated on a PS5. As of today, you can download Sly Cooper, Tomb Raider Legend, and Star Wars The Clone Wars, which were originally PS2 games, onto your PS4 or PS5, and they run in a official emulator on the system with full trophy support for the first time. So I wanted to try these games out and see how good this emulator is compared to basically the best of the best PC SX2, which is the most popular PS2 emulator available on PC. But anyways, it's been a long time coming ever since PS Plus started adding new classics, especially PS1 and PSP games. Players have been eagerly awaiting PS2 games. Supposedly all of the classic game ports that have launched on PS Plus since they switched to a tiered system have been done by a single studio called Implicit Conversions, who are working in direct partnership with Sony. I'm mainly going to be taking a look at Tomb Raider Legend and Sly Cooper 1 in this video. So the overall emulation UI is very similar to PS1 and PS2 games. There is rewind and save states, which is really cool and we have a few pretty simple CRT and scanline simulations. And they are actually pretty good, um, but I'm just gonna stick to no scanlines for most of this video. Unfortunately, it looks like Tomb Raider and Sly are both just running at 30 FPS, and oddly enough, they do give you the option to play the PAL or the NTSC versions of the game. I'm not totally sure about the, what differences that would make, but I guess options is always good. You also get fully remappable controls, which is really sweet. There is a weird enhancement setting in the emulator options for these games. I'm not actually sure what that did. I turned it on and off a couple of times and I couldn't see what was happening. And something that actually really surprised me was Tomb Raider Legend is running at a full 16x9 widescreen. However, both games are still running at their native 480p or 480i resolution. So they do look quite blurry on a 4K TV. Sly Cooper, on the other hand, runs at the original 4x3 aspect ratio, which is kind of disappointing. This game has quite a bit of ghosting, but I think that's a stylistic choice that rather than an emulation issue. And then the big thing that I found out about both of these games is that they were both ported to PS3. So the Sly Cooper collection on PS3 actually runs Sly Cooper 1 in 16x9 at 720p, and it even ran at a full 60fps. So it's kind of weird that we're still getting the original game stuck in 4x3 because all that porting work has already been done in basically an official capacity by Sony. It's weird that they went for the PS2 version rather than the PS3 port. They could have just ported the PS3 version and labeled it as the PS2 port and that would have been significantly better than what we're getting here. And then Tomb Raider Legend actually has a widescreen setting in the original game. So that's why that game runs at 16x9. So they basically permanently enabled that and you can't actually turn it off in the settings whereas you can in the original game. It seems like the cutscenes in this Tomb Raider game in particular are also rendered at a widescreen format so those also play quite nicely. So I thought that was kind of interesting. But yeah, both of these games have PS3 ports that are 16 by 9 and presumably have better graphics. So it's just kind of strange that they chose these games to be the first PS2 ports to PS4 and PS5. And then obviously when you play these games emulated on a PC through PC SX2, you do get a lot more options so you can turn up the game to 1080p or even 4K. I wasn't quite able to do that on my system, but it is possible. However, you do run into a lot of issues that are very finicky. For example, I couldn't get the widescreen working on Sly Cooper properly. It would simply just stretch the game. And then you can see me here trying to figure out these graphical settings just to get the game to run, which is always a problem with gaming on PC. So these PS5 versions of the game will just run really easily and smoothly and they do have all the save states and stuff. So it's just a lot more convenient to play on PlayStation as is usually the case. And then on Tomb Raider on the PC side, when you upscale this game to 1080p or whatever, the bloom effects in the game start rendering very brokenly and the whole game looks kind of smeared, which is just another visual problem that I couldn't seem to fix very easily on the emulator on the PC side. So obviously on the PS5 you're not getting these upscaling options, but then you're also not getting these graphical issues and you don't need to fix anything, it's just going to run as it was on the PS2 with these enhancements that they don't really tell you what they are. But again, because of the PS3 versions of that exist of these games, again it just brings the point that we need PS3 emulation on the PS5 pretty badly. And I know people are gonna be like, oh, the hardware is too difficult, but the PS5 is powerful enough. And if you actually look into PS3 emulation with something like RPCS3, the minimum specs required to run some of those games, especially PS2 ports are not that high. So they have the resources and I'm just tired of seeing people making excuses for this missing feature. It's just Sony needs to get on it so bad. 
but both of these games played great otherwise I quite enjoyed them I might continue with Tomb Raider I haven't played a lot of the older Tomb Raider games obviously it reminded me a lot of Uncharted which I'm a huge huge fan of so I think I'll probably continue playing that game a little bit more and let me know down below which PS2 games you want to see on the system and like and subscribe and all that good stuff if you've made it this far and thanks for watching see you next time